back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Hope everyone is doing great. If you are new here, you're welcome. Do well to subscribe and also click on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified. And to my returning subscribers, thank you so much for always coming to watch, watch my videos. I really appreciate that. So today, I'm going to show you how to cut and sew a trendy cow caftan. This caftan can be cut using different methods. You can cut it on bias. You can fold your fabric the normal way and cut. So I'll be working with this fabric. It's silk fabric. It's three yards. And the measurement needed for this gown are your shoulder measurements, the length of the sleeve, your sleeve opening, the length of your gown, and your hip measurements. So for the bias method of cutting this gown, this is how to fold your fabric. This fabric is already folded into two as you can see. So I'm going to fold again to make it four. So I'm going to fold this way, watch. Can you see? Can you see? This is how to fold on bias. Can you see? Can you see? So now if I want to take the length of the gown, I will measure from here down okay so for this bias method of cutting this gown you won't have any side seam the side is going to be seamless okay so this side becomes this side with the opening becomes your center front and your center back and that's where you're going to mark your neckline for your back and the neckline for your front now for the top part uh, the shoulder line is where you also have your sleeve opening your sleeve opening is not going to be by the side because there is no side seam okay it's going to be at the top so you mark your neckline mark your the length of your sleeve and the rest will be your sleeve opening okay so this fabric i'm working with is three yards if i should fold on bias then that means i'll have a short length if i want a longer length i should work with four or more yards okay so another thing i want you to notice is that when you are done cutting each piece will represent the front and the back and the other piece will represent the front and the back. I hope you're not confused. Remember that this is the center front and this is a uh, side without no seam. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to fold your fabric if you want to use the normal way of cutting. So before I continue, I'm going to further explain how to cut this caftan using the bias method. So I'm going to illustrate that using this paper. We are going to assume that this paper is our fabric. I've already folded into two as you can see. So I'll fold again, making it four this way. Can you see? So the next thing I'm going to do is to measure this top part to see if it will accommodate my shoulder measurements, the length of the sleeve and the sleeve opening, okay? If not, I will still increase it this way. Can you see? To make sure that it will take my shoulder length of the sleeve and the sleeve opening measurement. Okay. So when I'm done doing that, I'm going to take the my hip, measure my hip depth from this top. Remember, this is where you're going to be taking your measurement from here. So I'm going to go down and take my hip depth, my hip uh, height. Then I'll measure my hip, round hip, to make sure that this will not be too tight around the hip and when I measure the hip I should have my hip measurements and also some allowance because the gown is a free gown okay so when I'm done doing that what I'm going to do is to take the the length of the gown now remember that this open side is going to be the center front and the center back and this closed part is going to be my side because the gown is going to be a seamless side caftan okay so that's that so the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut the length, take the length of the gown. So this is my length. I'm going to cut out this excess. So this becomes the shape of my gown. And you see, this is the shape of my gown now. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to mark the 
neckline for the back so at the center front i'm going to mark the neckline for the back so let's assume that i'm using a three inches by one inch for the back i'll mark it this way can you see and the neckline for the front is a v-neck so i'm going to make it three inches by let's say eight inches and i'll mark it okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to cut out the neckline for the back first so i'll cut it this way can you see you remember that the sleeve opening is not going to be at the side it's going to be at the top where you have your shoulder line because the side does not have any seam remember that so the next thing i'm going to do is to open it up this way can you see so each piece represents the back and the front can you see each piece represents the back and the front so what i'm going to do is to bring the center front and the center the two center front this way can you see and I will go ahead and cut out the neckline for the front this way. Okay. Can you see? So this is the neckline for the front. And this is the neckline for the back. Now remember that the back, the front has an inverted opening at the center front. So what I'm going to do is to bring the center front together this way. Can you see? Facing each other. So from the uh, center front at the hemline, I'll go up by, let's say, 12 or 15 inches, depending on how open you want yours to be. I will mark. And I'm going to slant it to the side this way. Can you see what I'm doing? To form my inverted V. Can you see? So I'll go ahead and cut it out this way. Can you see? So this is our cow have turned. Can you see? Can you see the shape? So by the time I close the shoulder, I'm going to sh close the shoulder and leave this uh, uh, the round sleeve opening. I'm going to leave the sleeve opening. So by the time the wearer wears it, the side will drip. Okay. So that's that for the uh, bias cutting of this captain. So I'll go ahead and show you how to cut using the normal method. So I've folded my fabric into four, as you can see. Can you see? So the length I'm working with is 56, uh, 53 inches. So the next thing I'm going to do is to mark out my neckline. So this side is uh, on fold and it's going to be my center front and my center back. So that's where I'll be marking my neckline. And here that is open is going to be my side because my side is going to have seam, unlike a, a bias method. Okay, so I'll go ahead and mark my neckline. The neckline for the back is going to be 3 inches by 2 inches. 3 inches by 2 inches. I'm using two inches instead of one because I'm going to hold my shoulder by one inch. So when I hold my shoulder by one inch, it will return to one inch, okay? So I'll go ahead and mark the, the back depth, which is two inches. Three, remember, it's three inches by two inches. I'll connect it this way. I hope you are seeing what I'm doing. I'll connect it this way. This is my center back neckline and for the center front i'll be working with uh, three inches by nine inches the center front is going to have a v-neck line so this is it this is nine inches by the time i hold the shoulder by one inch it will return to eight inches so i'll connect it this way are you saying so my center front is not going to have any opening but if you want yours to have an opening go ahead and create your open, open, open it up and also remember to add your seam allowance to join the, the to close the opening okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to mark my shoulder measurement my shoulder is 15 inches divided by two will give me sorry my shoulder is 16 inches divided by two will give me eight inches 
I will mark 8 inches here. The length of the sleeve I'm working with is uh, 12 inches. I'll go ahead and mark 12 inches. My sleeve opening is 7 inches. I will go ahead and mark 7 inches. And I need 1 inch to close the side, making it 8. So I'll mark 8 inches. Hope you're not confused. My sleeve opening is going to be at the shoulder line, not at the side. That is how I want it. If you want yours to be at the side, you can go ahead and do that since your side is going to have C, unlike the bias method. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to come down by 1.5 from the side to create my shoulder slant. So I'll mark 1.5 and I'll connect that point to my neckline this way. So I'm going to cut this out, but before I do that, I'll measure my hip height. So the hip height I'm working with is a 28 inches, so I'll mark 28 inches. This is 28 inches. My round hip is 44, divided by 4 will give me 11 inches. So I'm going to add 4 inches to that 11 inches for ease, because it's a free gown. When I add 4 to 11, it will give me 15 inches. I will add 1 inch allowance to that, which will give me, which will give me 16 inches. So I will mark 16 inches. Okay. So coming to the hemline, I'm going to use my hip measurement. The hip divided by uh, 4 will give me 11 inches. So I'm going to mark. 11 in inches. I won't add any ease to that because I want my hemline to look tapered. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is to cut out my shoulder slant. This method will still drape like the bias method. The only difference between this and the bias method is that the bias method doesn't have any side C. Okay. So it's still the same thing. The same effect that you're going to have. So I'll go ahead and cut out my neck, my back neckline first, leaving the front for now. Can you see? So the next thing I'm going to do now is to mark out my sleeve opening and I will notch that because I won't be closing it while closing my shoulder, okay? So remember it is uh, 7 inches. So I'm going to mark and notch that part. So this is where my sleeve opening is going to start from, can you see? So what I'm going to do next is to connect the hip, the shoulder to the hip, hip to the hemline. So this is how to go about it. See what I'm doing. Down to the hemline. Can you see? 
Now, if you don't want yours to be straight, you can go ahead and give your own some curls. Okay. So I'll go ahead and cut out the side now. This gown is quite simple. Anyone can do this. to do now is to remove the back from the front so I can cut the front neckline. So I'll gently remove the back this way. the front well so I can call the neckline and also the hemline. the front neckline which is the neckline can you see so coming to the main line remember that the front the center front has an opening that looks like an inverted V okay so from the center front I'm going to go up by 15 inches and our mark. So this is 15 inches here. So from that 15 inches, I'm going to connect to the side this way. Hope you are seeing what I'm doing. Let me bring the fabric up a bit so you can see it. So I'm going to curve it this way. Let me see. So I'll go ahead and cut it out. So this is how the front look like. Can you see? So this is how the hemline look like. Can you see? This is the neckline and this is the hemline. Can you see? So I'm going to go over to the machine and close the side, hem the neckline, hem the the hemline so I'm done sewing the gown as you can see so this is the neckline I piped the neckline using my bias tape can you see so there is a shoulder where I have the sleeve opening can you see the sleeve opening can you see so there's a sleeve opening can you see you can see the side I close the side can you see so there's a side can you see so this is the inverted V opening at the front. Can you see? I also pipe the hemline using the bias tape. Can you see? 
So this is the full length of the gown. And this is the back. So this is how the gown looks on my mannequin. Can you see? Can you see the side drip? Looking so beautiful. Can you see? Can you see the sleeve opening on the shoulder line? Can you see? And the inverted V. Can you see? The gown is looking short on the mannequin because the mannequin is quite tall. So if you like what you're seeing, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and see my next video. Bye.